Hello guys, this is Tom from Kudasol.com. Today we have Granson Archie. So Granson Archie is the first Goody Well tissues I have ever owned. I bought these six years ago in the UK when I was still a student back then. And I bought them during a Christmas sale, so I remember buying them for a very, very cheap price. I went to a lot of places uh, with these shoes and I wore them to, to the Netherlands, to the parties, to the clubs, to the bars. And so far, they have been holding up very, very well. I know that I didn't say many good things with Granson Fred review back in maybe a few months ago. But to be honest, for me, the quality and the feeling is very, very different from these and Fred. I don't know if it's because I have them for many years or if the Fred that I have is not very good quality ones, especially. But I had many good memories with Archie's but not with Fred's. So before I actually continue to talk about the shoes, let me just quickly tell you about the Granson's history. So Granson is a British shoemaker and was founded in 1866 in Northampton, England. Granson was founded by William Green and he passed away and his sons took over the business and changed the name to Granson. The name Granson is, comes, comes from Green Sun and then it turned into Granson. Granson actually has uh, over 150 years of history. So the production line for these are called G2 or Granson 2. So the line is actually made in India rather than the UK or in England, Northampton. But that doesn't mean the quality is really, really bad. Apparently, the ones made in India are more labor intensive rather than machine intensive because they have lack of machines in the factory. I did hear and read about people disliking Granson 2 line because of the quality control issues. With my pairs of these arches, I didn't have any issues. But as you know, with my Granson Fred, the toe area was not very, very sturdy. And I also had other Granson G2 line before, but I had to get rid of them because the quality was really bad and then there was a faulty uh, attachment with the tongue and the lacing area. However, I still have these Granson Archies. For me, these have a really, really nice history because back then, uh, as a university student, I was only interested in well, sneakers and basketball shoes like Jordans or nice sneakers like Air Force, but I saw these on Christmas sale. And I thought they were really nice and then I bought them and I really enjoyed them. I really enjoyed wearing them. And that's the first time I learned about Goodyear welted construction or Goodyear welt construction. And I realized that there are fine shoes in the world that actually last for a very long time. For me, that was very, very appealing because for sneakers, I wear them for maximum a year and then I can't wear them anymore because they will fall apart or they will be not comfortable anymore to wear. But with Grid Gritty Walty shoes, I've heard that they will last a lifetime, theoretically speaking. And I heard that they will be comfortable continuously. So that was a really, really appealing idea for me. And I started to buy more Gritty Walty shoes from here and there. And ended up here uh, collecting a lot of Gritty Walty shoes and boots and fine shoes. Also, uh, trying to share my experience with you guys of how I felt and in the future as well, I hope that I can actually uh, share more information to you guys as well. So the leather used on these are not like typical smooth calf leather or grain leather. They do look like grain leather from far away, but they're not actually grained leather. Uh, they look more like a reptile leather or lizard leather, but they're, I know that they are not. So they have a strange grain on them. I, I, I'm pretty sure when they're processed, they're pressed with something to make this kind of pattern or there was a method to make this pattern on top of the leather. It's probably not a good quality leather because they do this to hide the faults on the leather, right? The lining is calf leather and it's tan colored. Outside is brown colored grain leather. Uh, however, I really like the leather because it's very easy to shine on the toe. As you can see, I've shined the toes only. Uh, I need to shine, well, I need to care for the rest of the body, but I haven't done it today. And the leather itself is very sturdy. For my Fred, which is just calf leather, it's, it gets scuffed very easily and scratches show very, very easily as well. But I've told you I've worn this everywhere, but they're not scuffed. So they're very durable, in my opinion. I would say this is a very suitable 
pair of shoes for beginner who just learned to polish the shoes and who is learning how to well take care of goodie well to shoes i did a lot of experiment with these as well in terms of shoe creams and shoe polishes and i learned more uh, <laughs> these becoming the mole rats or the lab rats being my experimental shoes grandson archie c actually has commando soles. So C stands for the commando soles. And I heard that V stands for vibram soles. They also have R for rubber soles and leather soles as well. The commando soles are very, very sturdy and hard wearing soles. I have worn them for six years. Obviously I didn't wear them every day. I only wear shoes during the summertime, but they are very, very sturdy. But the only downside is when I walk around and if there's an uneven space, it's very easy to actually choose to make your ankle flip. Luckily, I didn't actually sprain my ankle, but it's very, very easy to actually, well, sprain your ankle if you're not careful enough. The soles are Goodio welted. That means they can be resold if it's worn out. I think I will resold these when I have time, but I will not do that anytime soon because it still has a lot of life in it. Why would I waste a perfectly good set of soles? The sizing is quite different from regular dress shoes that you'll see from the British brands because the width is actually G. Okay, Granson uses F as their medium width and then G as their wide width. I know that some brands actually use E as their medium width and F as their wide width, but Granson use F as a medium and G as a wide and these are made in G. So therefore I bought 10G, I bought UK 10G. I usually wear UK 11 for my sneakers like Adidas or Nike, but I wear UK 10.5 for my dress shoes for maybe CNJ and Trickers or Chini, those brands in the UK. So if anyone's going to buy these, I would recommend you to go one and a half size down from your brand of size. So all in all, UK 10G fits me very, very well. It's not a perfect fit for my feet, but it's comfortable enough for me to wear them for many, many years. The heel slips are not very bad. It's very, very minimal. And with a proper shoe tying, they're not too big either. Anyone who watches my video will know that I really like brogues because I like the pattern. I like how it looks. The broguing pattern on Granson is very, very unique as well. They have their own pattern on the toe, the same for Fred and Archie and some of their brogue shoes. And I like their oversized holes that's on the shoes rather than small ones. The cost of the shoes are 150 pounds that I bought them back in 2015. I think that's around $230 for people uh, watching from the US and that was many, many years ago. Now they cost around 300 pounds if you want to buy them directly off Granson's website. Do I think it's worth, these are worth 300 pounds? It's very debatable because if I convert 300 pounds to dollars, that's around $450, right? And with that money, you can probably buy other derby shoes or boots from a well-known brand that are probably a bit better quality than Granson. So in that sense, I do not think I will pay full price for them again if, I'm, if I were to buy Granson Archie now. However, I will definitely pay higher price for their triple welt shoes or made in England shoes because I've heard, I, don't, I haven't actually seen them with my eyes, but I've heard that their quality is much, much better compared to uh, made in India ones. But personally, I haven't seen them yet, so I'm yet to uh, actually compare their quality. I also know that Granson also uses other uh, leather on the top for Archie because Archie and Fred is their main and iconic models that they usually produce. So they use different leather at the top, calf leather, black calf leather, different colors, uh, burgundy, tan color, you name it, they all have it. They also have vegan leather as well. I don't know how they use vegan leather, probably from a, a plant. And they also have different soles with those different leather. So if you are looking for this kind of look on shoes and you want to buy something that will suit your need, for example, different kind of soles, different kind of tops, please go ahead and go to Granson.com and check out the Archies that they have. They actually have a really, really long selection of Archies. So there you go, guys. There was a quick review about Granson Archie. I didn't really want to make this video because I don't really wear these as much during the winter, but summer came and I wore these and then I remembered my good memory of Granson Archie and then uh, how I started this journey with these shoes. 
And what was the first pair of shoes that you guys bought to start your hobby as in collecting shoes? Or what was the first fine shoes that you bought ever in your life? Tell me in the comment section and let's discuss more about it. Also, I've noticed that I've reached 300 followers on YouTube. I remember it was like yesterday when I started filming my first review, but now I have reached 300 followers. I can't believe it that uh, 300 people are interested in my video. I know that it's not very high quality. I try to make it as best as I can with my limited knowledge of filming, lighting, and audio. But thank you guys for uh, the support so far with 300 followers. And I hope that uh, I can collect more and then create better and co higher quality videos for you guys. Thank you for watching the video. Please like and subscribe to my channel. I'll come back with more videos next time.